Welcome back to this series of videos that I'm running that are snippets of videos from my membership website from the field dot farm and today we are going to be talking to Carl Hammer who is the founder of Vermont Compost and this is just a small segment of a very long video I did with Carl. We followed him around on the farm for about an hour and it was probably the most fun shoot that I've ever done because he was so active and so fast on his feet we had a hard time keeping up with him but we did and we learned a lot Carl is a true master of his craft I would call him the Gandalf of the market gardening or compost world he's a true wizard of, uh, of compost and soil biology and and everything awesome about growing food we were in greenhouses we were visiting his donkeys we looked at his chickens and uh, looked at all the ingredients in the compost but in this video he's talking about garlic and he did some he's doing some things with garlic that I had never seen before so I think you guys will find it interesting and if you like this video and you want to see more stuff like that or access these full videos head over to fromthefield.farm there's a link in the show notes and the registration for the site is now open and it will be until October 18th and I'll be releasing a video every single day up until then so hope to see some of you guys in there there is a money-back guarantee for 30 days on the site so if you sign up and you realize that it's not for you no questions asked, no hard feelings, you get your money back, so there's no risk here. And uh, again, link is in the show notes, enjoy this one. Here, come on in here. It's currently being utilized uh, to manage the drying down of garlic. Uh -huh. Important crop for our morale. Um, I've grown a bunch from bulbils. The, uh, this year we did a lot of uh, cutting skate, you know, redoing re some of our 30 year old work on do you need to cut the scape to get size? Yes. And the answer is no. Uh, this actually, if I'm, it probably regrew the bolt scape after it was broken early. Yeah. So, and, and uh, you know, most, I mean, if it, the energy to regrow, obviously that there, there has to be enough fertility. Here's another regrow. This regrew, you can see it's much shorter than one that didn't get its scape broken, right? which you know makes a pretty tall plant. Anyway, I've been growing this rocambole since, uh, and and we uh, we save the bulbils. I, every year I plant directly from bulbils. Still, sometimes I get a really. Last year I had like market this size with, from directly from bulbil. Um, This is this year's bubble collection. Um, this is my sort for seed. I, we, we don't plant the big pa table stock. We plant smaller because you get a lot more sets per pound. Mm. Um, I, I, it's a complete myth that, that you must plant your best, largest. That right? Absolutely. That's just not true. Doesn't make any sense. They're clonal. And the bulbul is clonal, and sometimes people are confused about that and think this is a seed. It's not. In fact, the development of the bulbul suppresses the true flower. In order to make true seed, you've got to surgically remove the bulbul so that the true flower can emerge, and then you have to pollinate it. I tried this year, and I, I've never gotten anything to make any pollen. And it may be that this ascension is, quite, you know, is really unwilling. Now, I don't know how much you've followed the true seed controversy. Some people think it's urgent, including multinationals that want to patent and have seeds. Um, I have never felt like this clone was in any way deficient or that I was in some danger of it running out. And in fact, um, and then this is the run of bulbul planted, okay? Which were, last year I had really fully comparable, direct from bulbul, one season. This year I think I planted a little too deep. 
I got a run of quite usable um, seed stock. This is first year from Bobo, and so these are, can now be planted, and I will do that, and I'm going to compare, even though they should be comparable. These, um, I had a, a piece of self-managed garlic. <laughs> so it, we're now into the third year of its own management where I go in and, you know, I, it just plants itself and, and I do a little thinning and play around. Because garlic has the capacity to grow like a mangrove. And you can actually get market size. But getting reliable market size is another thing. And reliable is important, um, you know, for a crop. Is, I just I did a garlic workshop lately, the first one I've done since 1988. This is last year's garlic. And you can read in any book you want that Rocambole will not keep past Christmas. But these, this is sound Rocambole garlic that's been out of the ground for, for well, over a year. You know, and it's starting to sprout, which is not surprising, <laughs> okay? But there's still edible garlic in there. Um, so, yeah, garlic. It's one of them. So you can, if the fertility is uh, correct, grow garlic, um, leave the scape, harvest the bulbul, um, finding, you know, and bulbuls are very high sugar and very high oil and will keep quite a bit longer than garlic. I mean, I've had planted viable bulbuls that are four years old. <coughs> what controls the sizing of bulbuls? And what different, you know, is, is it better to sort if, and plant this instead of this? Intuitively, maybe, you know, and it's got its own little basal plate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and will sprout. <coughs> um, all right. Wow. That was garlic. Actually, here are last year's bulbuls, which have now been abandoned to do, fare as they may. This is last year's bulbul collection, and they're, this is not a, they're not feeling that proud about where they are in their refugee box, but they're trying. <laughs>